Hi guys, welcome to another of my build guide series. So in today's build guide, I will be talking about the Cast on Crit Ice Nova. This guide is mainly for starter and the low budget version. Um, low budget version meaning less than 5 exhausts. So for those of you that would like to see a medium budget version of this build, do check out my channel soon as it is still currently working in progress. Okay, so before we get started, enjoy some video footage of me running through the maps with the starter version and the low budget version of Cast on Crit Ice Nova.
showed myself Okay, so let's just get started. I will be doing two versions of the guide. Uh, one will be the starter version and the other one will be the low budget version and both of them will be done separately. Okay, so for the contents, I will do a little introduction on cast on Crete and then next I will go through the Ascendancy, 
the skill tree and the pantheons and bandits then next i will go through the skill gems for the two different versions as well as the cluster jewels and the base jewels required for the two different versions um, next will be the gears and equipments also for the two different versions and then the important things to take note when you are building your gears and last but not least uh, some leveling notes to take note of when you are going through the X. so reasons to play cards on crit ice nova assassin um, first of all you want a very fast mapper the cast on crit ice nova assassin is one or if not the best mapper due to the amazing clear speed it has second uh, you want to go fast you want to go extremely fast uh, like moving fast and hitting fast this build actually has extremely high mobility um, third you want a build that actually crits a lot the assassin skill tree actually is very easy to scale nearly 100% effective critical chance fourth uh, you're looking for some core skills to play with and i'm pretty sure this build has plenty of core skill animations for you to view and lastly you want some extremely fanciful build guys this build is very very flashy you gotta beware of pc lag when there are like plenty of mobs or a lot of packs of mobs Okay, now this is the important part on COC, um, understanding how cast on crit actually works. I think not many people know this, but I, I would suggest if you are going to play this build, this is like the base theory you need to understand. Okay, so first of all, cast on crit gems and cosplay works around cooldown and attack per second so um to increase the amount of times you can trigger the spell you will actually require to have increased cooldown recovery speed also known as icrs and you will also need to reach near the aps optimal point so okay the first break point to change the trigger rate will be to have a minimum of 14 percent icrs and that means anything below it will be the same as normal you are just triggering it as per normal and please take note if you are trying to craft uh, increased cooldown recovery speed on your items it does not work okay and next um if your aps is over the optimal point it means that your attacks are hitting before the cooldown of the skill is actually refreshed so that means if you are hitting so much faster than what your ice nova skill can actually cool down you are not unleashing the ice nova as per what it should be and uh, next if you are dual welding the cosplay with cyclone it basically means each weapon will hit half the times of your current APS so I'm going to give you an example here of the table that is shown below um, if you have let's say 10 APS it means each of your cosplay will be hitting for 5 APS actually so um, lastly it is best to have your APS near the optimal point value but you should never go over it because if you go over it uh, I've mentioned previously just now over here if it's over the optimal point your attacks are hitting before the cooldown of the skill is actually refreshed so yeah for some of you that are actually lazy to understand this is what it actually means when you have 0% or below 14% cooldown recovery speed you should your APS should be 6.06 .06 and you are only triggering about 6 or less times per second and this is for the dual weld version so if you have 14 percent uh cooldown recovery speed uh you should have a eps of 7.57 do not go over it and you should be triggering about six to seven times per second of course this is the dual weld rate uh but usually we will not go over it if you are dual welding it and for the last one the 52 percent um not really needed over here because this is probably a very very expensive build but yeah uh single web will be 10.1 and then dual web will be 20.20 .20. 
Okay, next will be understanding how cosplay malice works. So cosplay will trigger one socketed spell every critical strike, right? And the trigger actually take turns in ascending order. So as you can see from my picture here, let's say if I have Ice Nova over here, and then I have probably Frostbolt over here, and last one maybe Frostbomb. So how it works is it will trigger the first one first, which is Ice Nova, and then it will trigger the Frostbolt, and then it will trigger the last socket, which is Frostbomb. Okay, so the cosplay each have a separate cooldown for each different skill. Next to take note is the cast on crit skill gem and cosplay actually do not share the same cooldown for the same skill. So which means you can have Ice Nova on your cast on crit skill gem uh, linked together and then you have cosplay linking with uh, Ice Nova as well and they both do not share the same cooldown, they are both different. Okay, the last thing to take note is uh, you cannot have two of the same spell skill in two cosplay. Means I gave you for example, uh, you cannot have two Ice Nova in two cosplay. But you can actually have Ice Nova in cosplay and Ice Nova in cast on crit as what I mentioned previously. Okay, let's talk about Ascendancy. For my Ascendancy, I'm going to go with the Assassin. Um, taking Miss Walker for the elusive, daily infusion, uh, along the way with unstable infusion, and then lastly opportunistic. So there are actually other options for the cast on Crit Ice Nova. The first will be the occultist. If you are going for the occultist, here are the options for it. Uh, there's actually an additional curse on the skill tree, and you have more area of effect. You have more cold damage as well. The next option is the Ascendant. If you are going for the Ascendant, uh, you'll be more tanky because it uses utilizes mind over matter. Um, the Indigon Helmet, which actually has the Spellburst combo with Arcane Cloak. And it actually has an extremely high mana pool to go with the mind over matter. So I choose for the Assassin class because I just want to go really fast with the Elusive. I want the dodge chance from elusive as well and I want to be able to build crit chance and crit multiplier really easily. As you can see from the tree, it has lots of critical chance and critical multiplier nodes. Okay, I will go through the Pantheons and Bandits first. So for the Pantheons, uh, you want to take Soul of Lunaris, which actually gives you the 1% additional physical damage reduction for each nearby enemy but what I'm really looking for here is the 1% increased movement speed for each nearby enemy up to 8% I just want to stack all the movement speed so I can go really fast next uh, will be the soul of Garu Khan 5% uh, chance to evade attack hits if you have taken a savage hit recently and 6% increased movement speed if you haven't been hit recently this is what I'm actually looking for and to able to activate this part of the uh, Pantheon, you actually need to capture Stalker of the Endless Dunes in Deep Map by using the Divine Vessel. I think not many beginners know this, so if you have any issues, you can just ask me anytime. And for the Bandits, my personal opinion is just um, kill all, kill everybody to get the two passive skill points, cause it's really hard to spec the uh, skill tree, in my opinion. And otherwise, if you really have problems with the uh, elemental resistance, you can just help Alira for the small amount of uh, resist. I think it's 15% and the additional 20% critical multiplier. I think it's 20% if I'm not wrong. Okay, let's start off with the starter version of the build. Um, firstly, on the skill tree, the keynotes we are actually looking out for is most important, the two basic jewel socket. Um, is over here and over here yeah so that you can equip the frozen trial as soon as possible and then the others the other skill notes we'll be looking for is power charges uh, the dodge notes on the right here and then all the critical chance notes spell damage area of effect um, accuracy the death perception which is over here which actually gives you a critical chance as well and then maximum life Okay, on to the skill gems for the starter version. 
uh, because we will not be using Cosprey for this, uh, it works differently with the low budget version. So first of all, the body armor, we're going to link Cyclone with cast on Critical Strike and then Ice Nova and then Frostbolt together. Also with increased Critical Strikes and then Inspiration. We're just focusing a lot on our Critical Strike chances for the main skill. And next, uh, for our first weapon, you're going to use Flame Dash and Second Wind and then Arcane Surge, but keep Arcane Surge at level 5 only. The reason for this is because at uh, level 5, every time you trigger Flame Dash, you are guaranteed to trigger Arcane Surge effect, which actually gives you 12% extra spell damage. And next for the second weapon, we have uh, our Auras, which is Preci Precision, Hatred, and Hero of Ice. For the helmet, this is the debuff part. Uh, you're gonna have Vortex, Hex Touch, Bone Chill, and Frost Bite. For the gloves, you're gonna want to link Spell Totem with Frost Bomb, uh, so that when you're doing boss fights, you don't always have to cast Frost Bomb for the extra cold exposure. And then best is to link Hypothermia and Calling Strike together. So for Calling Strike, you can actually change anything, but my personal preference is Calling Strike so that you can kill the boss a little bit faster. And for the boots, we are going to go for our defensive setup, which is the cast when damage taken, immortal core, steel skin, and increased duration. So my take on this will be just keep it at the levels accordingly so that you can cast as and when you take damage. Okay, so for the increased duration, why level 12 only instead of level 20 is because we do not have enough strength to equip, uh, to increase the level. So of course, if you have additional strength from your equipment and whatsoever, you can always uh, increase the level. Okay, the jewels for the starter version is very simple. All you need is just two frozen trowel and put them in both basic jewel socket shown on the path of building so yeah get both jewel socket nodes as early as possible so you can start uh, firing more balls for the gears um, the weapons you want to be purchasing two divinarius uh, two divinarius is probably the best in slot for the starter build as it gives you a huge increase in spell damage and it actually gives you a very huge increase in critical strike chance for spell which actually means that more or less your spells are going to crit every single time okay so for the helmet uh, we got, we're just going to go for a rare helmet with life and resist um, the body armor you don't really need anything on it but your focus here will be to find the correct colors socket colors for your six link and for the gloves, uh, go for a rare gloves with life and resist. For the boots, go for a rare boots with life, resist and movement speed. So the movement speed is actually quite important. You will want to try and look for 25% at least. And of course, if you can get a two-tone type boots, it will be great. For the amulet, we are not going to go for resist, but instead we're going to go for a life and one critical multiplier mod with any one other related damage mod and bear in mind that the amulet needs to be a citrine amulet cause we will be lacking the strength if we are not using the citrine amulet uh, the deck is a good addition as well i don't see why we need more intelligence so yeah citrine amulet is the best for the rings uh, we're going to go for rare rings with one life mod uh, one accuracy and only one resist mod uh, you can try to find two resist mod over here but i think it's going to be very expensive that's why i only went with the one resist mod because if you were to follow all this item guide your resist will definitely be able to cap very easily i have tested it myself so yeah and of course if you are able to get a two stone type ring it will definitely be great it will be much easier to cap your resist for the belt, uh, you're going to go for the rare belt with life and resist. Because this is a starter build, you don't really need to go for increased recovery cooldown over here. You don't need to look for that. So just a plain simple belt with life and resist will do. 
Okay, on to the low budget version of the build. Um, the tree is just slightly different because we will be utilizing the large cluster jewels and the medium cluster jewels. So the keynotes we will be looking out for first is the basic jewel socket for the frozen trial. I have put one over here and then the power charge nodes the same as the previous one which is over here all of them all three of them and then the dodge nodes which is the acrobatics over here on the right side uh, the rest are just critical chance nodes spell damage area of effect uh, the accuracy same the depth perception over here which give you crit as well and then lastly maximum life Okay, the skill gen for the low budget is actually very different from the starter version. So for the body armor, the sixth link, we're going to use Cyclone as our main skill. And then cast on critical strike, Ice Nova as our only cast on crit spell. Uh, link with hypothermia, increase critical strikes and inspiration. So for the weapon one, the first cost speed that you're going to have, uh, link it with Frostbolt greater multiple projectiles and added cold damage so for those of you out there that does not want to have the added cold damage you can always change it to hypothermia just see whatever that fits in it and go with it so for the second cosby on the weapon 2 you're gonna have ice nova this is the second ice nova linked with frost bomb and hypothermia like i mentioned again uh, if you do not want hypothermia you can always change it uh, for the last one just change whatever that you see fit and so for those of you that do not have a second cosplay you can always use a shield or just a temporary weapon and that socket will be spell totem frost bomb and calling strike same like the starter version i want to use the spell totem and frost bomb so that i do not have to keep casting them when i'm fighting in boss fight arenas or whatsoever Okay, for the helmet, uh, this is the debuff, it's the same as the previous. We're gonna use Vortex, Hex Touch, Bone Chill, and Frost Bite. Okay, so for our gloves, we're gonna want to have our auras in here. Uh, first will be the Hatred, then the Herald of Ice, Precision, and Vile Grace. So we will not be activating the aura of Grace over here. What we are look actually looking for is the Vile effect of it. We actually give us extra dodge chance for spell and attacks we'll be only using this most of the time in ultimatum and probably the last boss fight of every map and for our boost we're going to have a 2-2 link over here do not link all four together um, our defensive setup which will be cast when damage taken and immortal core which will be at level 1 and level 3 only so just increase this uh, as and when you like and same the blue one will be for flame dash and arcane search will be at level 5 same because you want to trigger arcane search every time you use flame dash for the extra 12% spell damage okay on to the jewel section uh, we will require two large cluster jewel with prismatic heart Prismatic Heart gives you 10% to all elemental resistance and 30% increase to elemental damage. That makes it 20% to all elemental resistance and 60% to elemental damage. For the medium cluster jewel, we need 4 of them with Magnifier. So Magnifier gives you 10% increase area effect and 10% increase to critical strike multiplier so total of 40 percent increased aoe and 40 percent increased crit strike multiplier so next we will need four base jewel uh it can be either crimson cobalt or viridian any one of those and they need to have one life modifier one critical multiplier modifier and then if possible try to get an additional critical chance mod the critical chance mod is just a bonus so get it if you can otherwise just ignore it and for this build we will only need one frozen trail because we are already using greater multiple projectiles for our frost boat we really don't need so many um so many additional projectiles from our frost boat okay the gears for the low budget are the weapons we want to be looking for two cosplay malaise um, two cosplay malaise is 
what is needed over here if you cannot get two cosplay you can only get one then the other offhand just get a ratio with life and resist that uh, it's just as simple as that you don't really get need to get some special modifier shields or whatsoever okay so for the helmet you'll be using the devotos devotion we really just want to go fast uh, with the increased movement speed and the increased attack speed as well and it actually gives a very good amount of dex plus you have that reduced physical damage okay the body armor same as the previous uh, you don't really need anything of it uh, of course best if you can get some life on it but just focus on getting the correct six link socket colors for the gloves uh, you want to go for the fingerless silk glove with life and resist the fingerless silk glove actually gives you more spell damage and boots go for the two-tone rare boots with life resist and movement speed for the amulet are uh, same as the previous you're going to go for the citrine amulet with life one crit multiplier modifier and one other related damage modifier so the damage modifier the related damage modifier can be like cold damage added cold damage or if you really can't find you can just go for crit chance or whatsoever yeah so the wings is also the same go for the two-tone rare wings with life one accuracy mod and one resist mod for the belt the belt is slightly different we're going to go for a rare belt with life and you definitely need the 14 percent increased cooldown reduction speed on here at least a 14 percent and then plus resist so i think for that tier um it's only 14 to 15 anything below 14 i think you can just ignore it yeah it, it makes no difference so please bear in mind and remember you need to have at least 14 percent okay so here is some leveling tips for you guys out there um if you are on a budget you can start leveling with frostbot and ice nova so for starters right if you are just starting this game recently uh i would say try to take all the skill gems that are listed previously in the starter version and the guide and start leveling them along the edge along the way so yeah okay once you have reached act 4 and completed the quest to obtain the cast on crit gem uh you can start using the following skills in the order i've listed here you can just pause the video anytime to have a look so for this aura i'm pretty sure you don't need any explanation they do not need to be linked or whatsoever okay and yeah like i mentioned depending on the number of sockets you have you can follow the gems in ascending order of importance so with this uh you should be good all the way until act 10 and of course along the way always try to max your resist always resist resist first because life is not as important as resistance i mean it's equally important but resist is always the most important okay last but not least uh these are the important things you take note when you are building your gear um first for critical strike chance okay as long as your critical strike chance i mean not the effective one is actually over 80 percent you are fine because eventually your effective critical strike chance will be around 95 percent plus or so uh because you'll be using the diamond flask where your critical chance is lucky most of the time you are going to be critting all your hits okay secondly uh look out for your accuracy it must always be a hundred percent or at least 99 percent okay the reason is very simple because for each hit you miss you are basically going to miss your chance to trigger a skill which is your cast on crit and therefore it actually drops your overall dps so i'm going to give you an example if let's say example your accuracy is 90 percent for every 10 hits you will miss one correct out of 100 percent and then in short we actually multiply our final damage pass by 0.9 times that is a lot that is actually a lot on paper okay uh lastly for shopping tips uh you can always use bless op to change the implicit of the item i have i'm going to show this because actually many people are asking me why i cannot cap my stuff my resist and stuff like that so i think this is mainly for the beginners 
and yeah you can always buy corrupted items for your rare gears you don't need to be a non-corrupted item the reason why is because you can always change the sockets and colors or link even a two to four link from your benchcraft this is doable you only cannot use the currency item to change but you can use your benchcraft to change them so please do take note of this okay so that comes to the end of my build guide i hope everything has been covered then again you can always hop on onto my discord channel like all the others and always ask me anything you would like to know over there also if i have missed out or misunderstand anything um, feel free to comment in the section below and i'll have a look as soon as i can okay overall i would like to say that the cast on crit ice nova is an extremely smooth mapper it just gives you maximum satisfaction in mapping i mean if you don't believe me you can just try out yourself there's the starter version that is here for you to test if you actually like it or not and then you can always transit into the low budget build and the medium and high budget build later on so for those of you that will actually like to build the medium budget build um, there's actually plenty of builds out there from the others that has been released and you can always follow them so yeah unless you really want to follow mine which i am now currently going through every single detail very carefully um, i would say you have to wait for a while in the meantime you can just farm up some currency first i guarantee that the medium budget version will be less than 50x for sure okay so once again thank you for watching this video uh remember to hit the like and subscribe button if you like to see more content from me and i will see you in the next video bye